on one second. Let me put him on his work phone. Okay. Bill Kelso. He's going to drive you down in a golf cart to the Angela site. What America became begins here. I'm yet to see a ghost, but I certainly get the feeling, you know, that there's so many events have happened here that are so important to uh, American history. Archaeologists are trying to raise Angela's humanity. They're unearthing a powerful narrative to give her a voice, one they hope will be heard, shared, and help bring healing to a nation still wounded from the sins of the past. Our work is more than just digging. It's not just the volume of soil that we move, it's the story we tell as we do that. Do you feel like you know Angela? Emotionally, yes. Personally, not as much as I wish I did. This area is sort of a uh, conglomeration of three centuries. She lived somewhere between um, actually this large tree, that reconstructed ditch, over to the edge of the Ambler house, um, the near wall of those remains. We are standing on the grounds of what used to be the home of Captain William Pierce, a wealthy and well-connected planter and merchant during the 1600s. There's probably at least 12 to 15 structures underground here because as one house would go down, that might be torn down, spread out, and then they build back on top of that. So you have a ghost line here and a ghost line here. So that's, that's the thickness of a brick. Those are the lines between the bricks. See how they're about the same distance apart? Mm -hmm. So see, you're unearthing that for the first time. Angela lived and worked in the Pierce household. For the past two and a half years, archaeologists have been trying to figure out more about her daily life. What did she eat? What was her structure? What did she deposit into this space with her presence? There are some clues that would have come from across the Atlantic. This is a habitation area of some sort, mm -hmm. um, potentially could be um, a cellar pit. Mm. Um, but to find these two together when the previous two and a half years we found one cowrie shell total, to find two back-to-back -back days was uh, just incredible. They have basically lain here since they fell. This vista that we see here is what Angela and the other enslaved Africans would have seen when Ex they landed here. Exactly so, yeah. We're seeing exactly what she would have seen. Much of the river, James River, it is still pristine. Imagine that she didn't know what was going to happen to her. Um, there'd been so many upheavals in her life over the previous year or so. She m must have wondered whether she could, could get through. The Portuguese are trying to carve out a bigger colony of their own, which will be called Portuguese Angola. We think that um, it's very likely that Angela was one of thousands either killed or captured during, during this period. Angela was taken captive and placed into a barracoon. That's a holding pen for a time before she marched some 100 miles to the slave ship that would carry her out to sea. I mean, can you just even imagine that? That alone was a test of her endurance. The slaver that she would board, it was built for 200, but it carried 350 Africans out across the Atlantic. Angela and the others were kept below the decks most of the time, possibly in chains. The crossing um, is absolutely uh, horrendous because many of the Africans uh, perished on, on the voyage. While the Portuguese were a big superpower in the trade of bodies, 
the British decide they want in on the action and commandeer the ship with Angela and the others after a fierce battle at sea. Most of the Africans ended up on the White Lion, but Angela is one of the few placed on the Treasurer, which eventually sails toward Jamestown. And she was here alone. She was by herself. She didn't have her family. She was a young woman having to work for someone else to, to make her life uh, in the hands, really, of, of someone else. So we don't talk about uh, her reality, that she was by herself. She would have worked in, in the gardens and uh, more broadly around in the house lot, probably alongside her mistress, Joan Pierce, and uh, another female um, indentured servant called a maid, uh, um, Esther Ederif. She was reared to uh, be able to uh, complete certain tasks, to cook, to care for others, to have relationships with people, to show respect to elders, uh, to have a sense of, of worship and a sense of a relationship with the divine. These are the original roads that were there in the early 17th century. So we're literally walking in the footsteps of Angela and the other Africans. Angela had been a free person in Africa, but now she had to come to terms with her new existence. For Virginia would create an institution where hereditary and lifelong slavery was the sentence for Angela and the millions of Africans to come. These pieces that we find are uh, parts of people's lives. Uh, just like we are, all these people had homes and mothers and fathers and hopes and dreams. So this is called a rattlesnake bead. Mm. African slave trade, third quarter of the 17th century. Wow. Would this have been on a piece of jewelry? Yeah, for sure. The Angela site is considered urban archaeology, which means as visitors come by, the scientists often stop to share what they've learned. But getting people who look like Angela or those from indigenous communities to take this in on Jamestown Island has been a bit of a challenge. We have to be willing to talk about the pain. And I think as an agency, we've shied away from that. So people say, if you're not going to acknowledge what happened to us, if you're not going to share our story of tragedy and, um, and harm and displacement with the rest of the world in a real way, we're not, we don't feel welcome here because you're whitewashing uh, everything that happened. Native people were enslaved first. We tend to gloss over that reality. So here we have all of these settlements and places where the Aboriginal people, the original people of these shores occupied on this map, 1612 map. Uh, they were here, their lands were encroached upon, and many of them were seized uh, and taken and used as, as, as enslaved persons. White people have really dominated the narrative. And uh, this, this is partially true with Indian peoples as well. What takes place across those four centuries is consistent. That is to say that the bottom line is that Indian peoples were systematically discriminated against and so were Africans and African Americans. And that has significant consequences into the modern period. This renewed sharing of legacy is something 400 years in the making and changing the narrative around the diversity of who helped build this nation. This could be the critical discovery, you know, not the actual residence. Mm. So we don't know if this ground holds Angela's remains. No, we don't know by, by what we're able to see. The possibility, I'd have to say, there's a possibility. These are the, these are people, you know, these are the stories. You can't help but think, you know, who are you? Who and are you? 
you were just as alive as I am now. It's, it's not odd for people to talk about the feel that's out here on the site at all. People will actually kneel and touch the ground and feel the connection. The archaeology and the stories can close the gap between the forgotten and the remembered. Just want to let her know that she's remembering. She does it to me every time. Angela was more than just a name and a ledger who moved through history. The archaeologists who had the chance to connect with her spirit daily hope they have more time to bring her story and those of the other Africans who were enslaved to the light. If this site is a stage, they are still in the wings, hoping for the day when the curtain rises to showcase all the architects of the nation we call America. So where do we go from here, 400 years later? How do we turn the page and work toward a more perfect union? Dr. Fairfax says part of that work involves unpacking the stories of people who birthed this nation with their labor, their bodies, and their lives. Africans who were brought here against their will, and most certainly the native people who were here before slavery and freedom coexisted. The other part involves those of us who are here now. And what we do to advance the legacy of those unknown builders and shapers. And the uncomfortable truths surround a system of inequity with vestiges that linger today. <laughs>